The Edmonton Oilers had a strong regular season in 2021-22, finishing second in the Pacific Division with 104 points and clinching a playoff berth for the third time in five years. Led by the dynamic duo of Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl, who finished first and second in the NHL scoring race with 123 and 110 points respectively, the Oilers had one of the most potent offenses in the league, scoring 290 goals, seventh most in the NHL. They also had a solid defense, anchored by Darnell Nurse and Tyson Berry, and a reliable goaltending tandem of Miko Koskinen and Stuart Skinner. However, their playoff run was cut short by the Winnipeg Jets, who swept them in four games in the first round. The Oilers lost three of those games in overtime, including a heartbreaking triple overtime defeat in Game 4 that ended their season. What went wrong for the Oilers in their series against the Jets? Here are some possible reasons. The Jets were able to shut down McDavid and Dreisaitl, who combined for only one goal and four assists in the series. The Jets deployed their top defensive pair of Josh Morrissey and Dylan DeMello, as well as their checking line of Adam Lowry, Andrew Kopp and Mason Appleton, to shadow the Oilers' stars and limit their time and space. The Jets also blocked a lot of shots, clogging up the shooting lanes and frustrating the Oilers' shooters. The Oilers lack secondary scoring, as none of their other forwards stepped up to provide offense when McDavid and Dreisaitl were held in check. Ryan Nugent Hopkins, who was third on the team with 65 points in the regular season, had only one assist in the series. Zach Cashin, who was expected to provide some physicality and energy, missed three games due to injury. Jesse Puljujarvi, who had a breakout season with 22 goals, was held scoreless. The Oilers' depth players, such as Kyle Turris, Devin Shore and Tyler Ennis, were also ineffective. The Jets had better goaltending than the Oilers, as Connor Hellebick outplayed Koskinen and Skinner. Hellebick, who won the Vizina Trophy as the best goalie in the league in 2019-20, posted a .950 save percentage and a 1.60 goals against average in the series, making several key saves to keep his team in the game. Koskinen and Skinner, on the other hand, had a .899 save percentage and a 3.16 goals against average combined, allowing some soft goals that cost their team momentum. The Oilers lacked experience and composure, as they failed to close out games when they had the lead or were tied. In Game 1, they blew a 4-1 lead in the third period and lost 5-4 in overtime. In Game 3, they gave up a late goal with less than two minutes left in regulation and lost 5-4 in overtime again. In Game 4, they squandered several chances to end the game in overtime and eventually lost 4-3 in triple overtime. The Jets showed more resilience and poise under pressure as they capitalized on their opportunities and never gave up. These are some of the factors that contributed to the Oilers' disappointing playoff exit. The Oilers will have to learn from their mistakes and make some adjustments if they want to bounce back next season and win their first Stanley Cup since 1990. The Oilers have a lot of strengths and weaknesses that contributed to their playoff exit and will affect their chances of winning the Stanley Cup next season. Let's take a look at some of them and see what they need to do to improve or address them in the offseason. One of the Oilers' biggest strengths is their superstar duo of Connor McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl who led the league in scoring and were dominant in the regular season. They are arguably the best defensive players in the world and can create chances and goals out of nothing. However, they also have a weakness. They are too reliant on them. The Oilers lack secondary scoring and depth in their forward group, and when McDavid and Dreisaitl were shut down by the Jets' defense and goaltending, they had no one else to step up and produce. The Oilers need to find more balance and support for their top players, either by developing their young prospects or acquiring some proven veterans in the offseason. Another strength of the Oilers is their power play, which was the best in the league and scored at a historic rate of 27.6%. The Oilers had a lethal combination of skill, speed, creativity and chemistry on their power play unit, and they were able to capitalize on their opportunities with ease. However, they also had a weakness, their penalty kill, 
which was one of the worst in the league and allowed 3.45 goals per 60 minutes. The Oilers had trouble clearing the puck, blocking shots, disrupting passes and preventing rebounds on their penalty kill, and they gave up too many easy goals to their opponents. The Oilers need to improve their defensive awareness, discipline and aggressiveness on their penalty kill, either by coaching adjustments or personnel changes in the offseason. A third strength of the Oilers is their goaltending tandem of Mike Smith and Nico Koskinen, who both had solid seasons and gave the team a chance to win most nights. Smith was especially impressive, posting a .923 save percentage and a 2.31 goals against average at 39 years old. He was also a leader and a mentor for the team, and he played with passion and confidence. However, they also had a weakness, their inconsistency and age. Smith and Koskinen both had some bad games and stretches where they let in soft goals or failed to make timely saves. They also faced a lot of shots and high danger chances, which took a toll on their bodies and performance. Smith is an unrestricted free agent this summer and Koskinen has one more year left on his contract with a $4.5 million cap hit. The Oilers need to decide whether to re-sign Smith or look for another option in the offseason, and whether to keep Koskinen or try to trade him for some cap relief or assets. These are some of the main strengths and weaknesses of the Oilers, and what areas they need to improve or address in the offseason. The Oilers have a lot of potential and talent, but they also have some glaring holes and flaws that prevent them from reaching their ultimate goal of winning the Stanley Cup. They need to make some smart moves and changes in the offseason to build a more balanced, resilient and competitive team that can contend for the Cup next season. The Edmonton Oilers had a disappointing playoff exit in 2021, losing to the Winnipeg Jets in four straight games despite having the two best players in the world, Connor McDavid and Leon Draisaitl. The Oilers were swept for the first time since 1992 and failed to advance past the first round for the third consecutive season. So what can they do to bounce back and win the Stanley Cup next season? Here are some realistic moves or strategies that the Oilers can pursue to bolster their roster, coaching staff, or system for next season. First, the Oilers need to address their goaltending situation. Mike Smith had a solid regular season posting a .923 save percentage and a 2.31 goals against average, but he struggled in the playoffs, allowing 12 goals on 109 shots for a .890 save percentage. Smith is also 39 years old and will be an unrestricted free agent this summer. The Oilers need to find a younger and more reliable goalie who can handle the pressure of the postseason and provide stability for the long term. Some potential options are Philip Grubauer from Colorado, Linus Allmark from Buffalo, or Chris Dreger from Florida, who are all pending free agents and could be available for a reasonable price. Second, the Oilers need to improve their defensive depth and mobility. The Oilers relied heavily on their top four defensemen, Darnell Nurse, Tyson Berry, Adam Larson, and Ethan Bear who played over 20 minutes per game each in the regular season and over 23 minutes per game each in the playoffs. The Oilers also lacked speed and puck moving ability on their blue line, which made it harder for them to transition from defense to offense and generate scoring chances. The Oilers need to add some more quality defensemen who can skate well, move the puck quickly, and contribute offensively. Some potential options are Alec Martinez from Vegas, Dougie Hamilton from Carolina, or David Savard from Tampa Bay, who are all pending free agents and could be available for a reasonable price. Third, the Oilers need to find some more scoring depth and balance on their forward lines. The Oilers were too reliant on McDavid and Dreisaitl, who combined for 105 goals and 225 points in the regular season and 4 goals and 7 points in the playoffs. The Oilers had only three other forwards who scored more than 10 goals in the regular season, Jesse Puljujarvi, 15, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, 16, and Leon Dreisaitl, 31. The Oilers also had only three other forwards who scored more than one point in the playoffs, Puljujarvi, 2, Nugent Hopkins, 2, and Kayla Yamamoto, 2. 
The Oilers need to find some more consistent and complementary wingers who can play with McDavid and Dreisaitl and provide some secondary scoring. Some potential options are Taylor Hall from Boston, Mike Hoffman from Street, Lewis, or Kyle Palmieri from New York Islanders, who are all pending free agents and could be available for a reasonable price. Fourth, the Oilers need to make some adjustments to their coaching staff and system. Dave Tippett has done a good job of leading the Oilers to two consecutive playoff appearances, but he has also been criticized for some of his decisions in the postseason. For example, some fans questioned his line combinations, his power play strategy, his defensive matchups, and his goalie management. Tippett also failed to make any significant changes after losing the first three games of the series against Winnipeg. The Oilers need to evaluate their coaching staff and system and see if they can make any improvements or changes that can help them win more games in the playoffs. Some potential options are hiring a new assistant coach who can bring some fresh ideas or perspectives, changing their power play or penalty kill units or formations, or implementing a more aggressive or defensive style of play depending on the situation. These are some of the realistic moves or strategies that the Oilers can pursue to bolster their roster, coaching staff, or system for next season. By addressing these areas of need, the Oilers can hope to bounce back from their playoff exit and win the Stanley Cup next season.